Hey, it's Liberty, and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that are coming out in 2023 that I personally am really excited to get my hands on. In general, I'm really bad at reading new releases when they come out, so every year it's sort of a resolution of mine to get better at this. I've split these up by genre, so feel free to skip around. Um, there are some books that I've got my eye on that I think high chance of me actually getting to this year. So if you like this, do give it a thumbs up. I make videos all about books, history, culture, personality, etc. So do check those out and subscribe if you would like to. I'm going to get straight into it. And I'm going to start with historical fiction because, I mean, that's the main genre I read, let's be honest. This book is actually already out, I think, or coming out very, very soon. Um, but it's the London Seance Society by Sarah Penner. This book is set in 1873. And it's a gothic whodunit set in Victorian London. Vaudeline Delaire, I think that's how you pronounce her name, it's French, um, is a world famous medium and she conjures the spirits of dead people, specifically murder victims, to find out who exactly killed them. She's highly sought after by widows and private detectives. Lena Wicks is another character we follow and she goes to Paris to seek out Vaudeline. Lena's sister has died and she seeks her services to find out what happened to her sister. Lena then accompanies Vaudeline to London as her sort of like little protege assistant and they go there to solve a very high profile murder that's taken place. They sort of have to team up with very powerful men of the sort of league of male spiritualists to sort of solve the crime. They soon begin to suspect that all is not as it seems. This novel examines the sort of blurred lines between the sort of truth and what are illusions, the hidden power of women in Victorian society, and it allows you to really get lost in gothic historical fiction. Very exciting, very dark, right up my alley. I previously read The Lost Apothecary by the same author and I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. I think this is going to be way more up my street. Plus, I have been approved for this book already on NetGalley, so it is awaiting me as soon as I get my app together and start it. Historical fiction set in the 19th century is for some reason my kryptonite. The second historical fiction book that I'm excited to read is Gwen and Art are Not in Love by Lex Croucher. I loved Reputation. Infamous, I loved even more than Reputation. I had a massive book hangover after reading this book. But this time we are moving to sort of medieval England and we follow Gwen, who is the Princess of England. And then we have Arthur or Art, who is the descendant of the legendary King Arthur, but he is going to be a future Duke. The two of them have been betrothed since they were born but they really, really dislike each other. In the run up to their wedding, they're forced to spend the sort of summer together and they both very quickly discover each other's secrets. Gwen catches Art kissing a boy and Art finds Gwen's diary full of like steamy fantasies about Bridget, who is the realm's only female knight. They agree to be allies and cover for each other with Gwen becoming close to Bridget and Art becoming interested in Gwen's brother. Things heat up at the sort of annual royal tournament. There's gonna be plenty of sword fights, medieval queer shenanigans, um, plenty of romance and of course it's going to be funny. <laughs> Reputation and Infamous were both you know funny and witty and I have no doubt Gwen and Art will be just as good. I have a special shelf up in my bedroom um, for books released by like a little writing cult and it's growing. The shelf is growing. It's like a floating bookshelf so I don't know what I'm going to do like soon it's going to fill up. Soon I'm going to have no room because everyone's writing such amazing books um, but yeah. On to mysteries and thrillers now, and the first on my list is called Death of a Bookseller. Now this hits close to home because I used to be a bookseller. I was drawn to this straight away because of that. We've got two main characters, Roach and Laura. Roach is a loner who's obsessed with true crime, reads a lot of books about serial killers, listens to a lot of podcasts. She's not interested in making friends apart from her pet snail. Then Laura joins the staff. Now, Laura is everyone's favorite. She is a tote bag wearing woman. She writes poetry, she's very floral, but Roach senses a darkness in her, and the same darkness that she herself has. And Roach's interest in Laura turns into an obsession. She becomes determined to be in Laura's life. And this novel is very much about people who are drawn to each other, a very deadly friendship um, and a true crime case that feels very much like a game. This sounds amazing. I've been reading more thrillers recently and I can't wait to add this one to my list. I want to carry that through into 2023 and this seems like the perfect choice. Another mystery novel that I want to read and I actually will own this because I pre-ordered it. Gorgeous cover 
with sprayed edges from Waterstones. But anyway, it's The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. I've seen this described as Secret History meets Ninth House. And I've read A Secret History, haven't read Ninth House, but I mean, that's been on my list for ages. This is a debut novel about a group of art researchers and a 15th century sort of tarot deck. Our main character is Anne who arrives in New York with the hope of working at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for the summer. Instead, she's assigned to The Cloisters, um, which is a gothic museum with a, you know, garden and it's renowned for having this collection of medieval and renaissance art. Anne finds herself drawn into this group of researchers, including the curator, um, whose name is Patrick, and they're convinced that the history of tarot is sort of the key to unlocking fortune telling and telling the future. Everyone's got secrets, including Anne, and Anne is, you know, happy enough to go along with Patrick's little theories. Anne discovers a 15th century tarot deck which puts her in the middle of this game of power and ambition and toxic friendship. I'm very much putting in a box the fact that finding a 15th century Italian tarot deck in New York is gonna be a little bit unbelievable but you know weirder things have happened. This novel is a sort of mashup of like the modern and the arcane um, and I'm very excited to get stuck into some some dark academia, love some dark academia. On to the fantasy releases that I want to read. And the first one is The Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chokshi. This is a sort of crime thriller meets fairy tale. Um, and it's actually a debut novel. And this is about a married couple. And the groom is a scholar who has grown up believing in fairy tales um, and studies them. And the bride is called Indigo and she's an heiress. They fall in love, they believe they're gonna live happily ever after. Um, then Indigo makes her husband promise that he's just never gonna pry into her past, which is fine. It all goes well until Indigo's estranged aunt dies, or is dying, I think. I'm not sure if she actually dies. But the couple are forced to return to Indigo's childhood home, which is called the House of Dreams. The house is all like musty halls and extravagantly decorated rooms. But within this house, the groom whose name I don't actually know and couldn't find anywhere and I'm sure that it means it's going to be a thing that you just don't know his name but he finds the sort of shadow of Azure who is one of Indigo's childhood friends um, who suddenly disappeared and it all turns into something like the house is like revealing all of his wife's secrets and he's finding out things about her that he never knew and he needs to decide whether he believes in fantasy and fairy tales or, or not and if getting to the bottom of things is something that he even wants to do um, because it could potentially destroy his marriage. This seems bizarre, but also something that I might love. You know, fantasy, secrets, gothic inspired setting and extravagantly dressed houses, books about stories and, and storytelling and fairy tales. I'm just really drawn to that. When multiple people use the word spellbinding to refer to a book, I know that I wanna read that. The next fantasy book that's going straight into my shopping basket is The Fox Glove King by Hannah Witten. This is the first book in a series about the sort of power that it takes to raise people from the dead. Mortem is what it's called. In this city, it's sort of high priced and very much illicit. The main character is Law. When she was 13, escaped from this cult. Um, in the catacombs of the city. And it's been 10 years since then, you know, she has only had one rule for herself and that's to not get caught. So she has a job running poisons. She's managed to keep a roof over her head, keep herself financially solvent all of this time. One day a run goes wrong, however, and she sort of ends up revealing her power, I think. Um, well, I assume she does because she gets taken by this group of warrior monks. Basically, ordinarily, she would have been killed, but she's charged by the king to help solve the mystery of like a bunch of villagers on the outskirts of the kingdom. People have just been dying for no reason. She finds herself in the middle of the sainted king's court and she can't trust anyone. The monks have given her this bodyguard um, whose name is Gabriel, who used to be a duke and then decided to become a monk, who I imagine will sort of help her navigate this court. And she keeps running up against the king's heir. There's so much political maneuvering that I'm gathering as a lot of sort of religion and that institution and how that fits into it and the power of death and bringing people back from the death. This sounds exciting. And she has to sort of deal with this whilst the people who are looking for her the ex-cult she was a part of are catching up to her, so it sounds like it's gonna be exciting. Finally for the fantasy books is God Killer by Hannah Kainer, and this is set in a fantasy world populated with gods and knights and all of that lovely high fantasy stuff. Kissen is a god killer. Her family was killed by a fire god, and so she very much enjoys exacting her brand of revenge. One day she encounters a god that she cannot kill, the god of white lies, who was sort of 
find a way to bond himself to this like little noble girl who's on the run. And they're both running together from assassins. They're on the way to this city um, where the last of the wild gods live and they all want to beg a favor from their gods. Elagast is a knight who fought in the God War and his career has included purging the city that they're running towards um, of like a thousand shrines to all these gods before he laid down his sword. And he actually meets the group when he's on the way to the city. The king has sent him on a quest. So they all meet and he's got to keep his quest hidden from them. But they've all got to join together to defeat a evil that could wipe out the world. There's a civil war ranging around them. There's the assassins after the little girl. They are the only ones who can stop what is spreading through the kingdom. I read a few things about humans and gods sort of existing in the same world. Um, and I'm excited to see how it's done in fantasy world because I've read all of those in a sort of contemporary setting. So very excited. The next book I'm cited for, and I'm, we're moving on to YA now, it's Mysteries of Thorn Manor by Margaret Rogerson. And this is a sort of sequel novella to one of the favourite books that I read in 2021, um, which is The Sorcery of Thorns. We follow the same characters, Elizabeth, Silas, Nathaniel, when they find themselves trapped inside Thorn Manor and they've got to escape in time for the Midwinter Ball. Elizabeth and Nathaniel, they're settling into their new life like together after the events of Sorcery of Thorns. Reporters have sort of been swarming them for information about exactly what happened and gossip because Nathaniel is the city's most powerful sorcerer and Elizabeth is sort of this librarian who just came out of nowhere and stole his heart. Elizabeth is trying to obviously explore this new romance but apparently the house doesn't like her very much because the house literally, I mean it has wards to keep the house and the inhabitants safe but they're malfunctioning and so they trap everyone inside the house um, which includes a sort of new maid who's called Mercy as well as the original three that we have and they have to work together to find out what's happening where this is coming from before they are supposed to host the midwinter ball. Nathaniel's ancestors and sort of the magic flowing through the house they will require a price. The gang have to make things right. I'm a real sucker for fantasy that's like wood paneled houses and cobbled streets that kind of vibe and so of course I love Sorcery of Thorns. This fits right into that and I'll be picking this up as soon as I can get my hands on it. The next book on my list is also YA fantasy and it's Of Light and Shadow by Tanas Bathina. This YA novel was inspired by 17th century India and this is all set in the kingdom of Jwala. I hope that's how you pronounce it. Always pronounce things really awfully so I humbly apologize if that was wrong. We follow two characters in this novel. The first is Roshan and she was abandoned at birth and raised by the leader of this ruthless gang who were farmers and they're now bandits. They're called the Shadow Clan. One day her adoptive father is killed and she takes it upon herself to sort of exact revenge for his death. She is now the leader of the Shadow Clan and she's desperate to do this herself, but also to liberate her people from poverty, which was brought upon them by this corrupt governor that's been in the region. The other character is Prince Narvin, and he is the second in line, or the spare, um, to the throne of the kingdom of Jwala. He's seemingly unimportant, and nobody actually notices him when he goes missing, when he gets kidnapped by the Shadow Clan. However, he has a plan of his own to escape, um, and that is to befriend the leader of the Shadow Clan to then ensure his escape that way. However, this goes sideways, the two of them start to have feelings for each other and the prince begins to sort of understand the reality of what people's daily lives are like and what they go through and the corruption that they live under. Enemies to lovers romance, yes please. I really want to read more novels inspired by India and set in India so this is a great start. I love epic fantasy, especially historical inspired fantasy, I mean political tension, dangerous plans and schemes, kidnapping, that all sounds. Fights against injustice, it's all right up my street. It's coming out in May and it's a standalone, so you don't have to wait around for the next one. It's all gonna, all gonna wrap up nicely. Finally, the last book I'm excited for is Silver in the Bone by Alexandra Bracken. Now, I have heard of Alexandra Bracken. I know that she's supposed to be an amazing fantasy writer. I have not gotten around to reading any of her books yet. This is the first in a new series and actually sort of inspired by Arthurian law, which is just, yes, please, I love that. Waterstones described it as um, Arthurian legend meets Lord of the Rings. So, I mean, perfect for me. Nothing could be more perfect. <laughs> the main character is Tamsin Lark and she is a mortal who has no, seemingly no magical talent whatsoever. She didn't ask to be a hollower. She finds out or turns into a hollower. I'm not entirely sure how this works yet. A, a hollower is essentially a sort of magical crypt robber, if I'm understanding it right. Anyway, Tamsin's brother, 
Cabell, I think he pronounced his name, um, he's been cursed. And when Tamsin hears of this sort of powerful ring from Arthurian legend, who she hopes will be able to save her brother from his curse, she has to team up with one of her sort of enemies, Emrys, in order to get this ring for herself. Unfortunately, they have heard the rumour, that means everybody's heard the rumour, it's travel far and wide, they're not the only ones who want this ring. And together they sort of have to wade through dark magic and deadly secrets in order to complete their quest. I love me some Arthurian inspired fiction. This one comes highly recommended. So this is gonna be my first Alexander Bracken and I'm here for it. Thank you for watching. That was all the books that I'm excited to be released in 2023. Um, let me know if there are any books coming out in 2023 that you think I would like or that you are particularly excited to read. I'm always down for recommendations. Um, if you like this, do give it a thumbs up. As I said before, I make videos all about books, history, personality, culture, etc. So do check those out and subscribe if you want to. Happy reading.